Welcome fellow Quest heads and VR lovers, this is Eyes on VR, where I bring you in-depth game reviews and up-to-date VR news too. And boy oh boy has it been a busy week for VR this week. We have a lot to talk about here. Everything from the success of Gorilla Tag, new Beat Saber original soundtracks, Facebook neural interfaces for VR, which is very scary, the new PlayStation 5 VR headset and VR motion controllers, and a new locomotion system that could change everything for every VR headset user. And of course, stick around to the end of the video to find out who the three lucky winners of our game giveaway from last week are, who are going to win themselves a free copy of the very scary, very intense Solicitude Wake Up. Believe me, it's scary. Ah! Okay, that's good. <laughs> oh my god, what the f was that? <laughs> right, that's that. Let's dive in to the news. Now, here's an interesting one. PlayStation have finally stepped up their VR game this week with the announcement of the PS5 motion controllers. It seems they are finally taking that full jump into VR territory. I think they look great. They have a massive tracking ring, which is always helpful. And they don't look too cumbersome or huge like the Vive controllers, because those things are a beast to hold. They look sleek. They've got all the familiar buttons that you would have on a PlayStation controller on them, including your triggers. This, of course, is following up the announcement of PlayStation saying that they are working on a new next-gen VR headset for the PS5. Now, what's very interesting, though, is they say that the new headset will be what tracks these motion controllers. So there may be some kind of question style camera system here from the headset to track those controllers. It's early days yet, or so they say, but it is great news for all PSVR enthusiasts because it seems PlayStation are finally recognizing how valid VR is of a gaming medium, and that means it's gonna bring some massive games along with it as well. And you might even be able to just have a free wireless PSVR headset along with these motion controllers. And by free, I mean wire-free, not price-free, obviously. Now, a familiar game on the news segment of this channel is Zenith. The MMO RPG VR game coming to all systems now has a 30 minute long pre-alpha gameplay video and things are looking pretty good. <laughs> There's plenty of interaction with people on here, a good look at the environment and plenty of combat. It looks good, quite honestly. It gives huge Sword Art Online vibes. I just cannot stop picturing when I look at this world, the first scene where Kirito is teaching Klein how to fight for the first time when they're taking on that boar. Can't stop thinking about it. Just can't get that scene out of my head whenever I look at this game. So they've just finished a round of fundraising to get access to the alphas and the beta versions and they are all sold out already. I really wanted to get in on it but I just don't have the money to afford a place on this thing which is a shame but that's just the way things go sometimes. It will be released so everyone will get a go at it eventually. Now this shows though that there is a lot of interest in this game which is amazing as these are the kind of games VR needs to have in my opinion. The amount of hours people have put into playing World of Warcraft Star Wars Online, Matrix Online, or even RuneScape is probably a shocking amount of hours. But ever since the invention of the MMORPG, people have wanted to really live it. That's what makes these games so appealing is you're in a new world and you can kind of live it. You can shop there, live there, get married there, and, and do all of these things. But when you do this in VR, that's just a whole new level of immersion. Zenith looks like it's still on course for a full and amazing release. Obviously, that can have good or bad implications when it comes to MMORPGs and people basically losing their life to them. That is a real thing that happens and in VR I could see that being escalated but of course that's no knock on Zenith it just says how amazing it's probably going to be but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. At the end of the day there's going to be more news on Zenith and I will keep you up to date every step of the way. Next up, we've got Gorilla Tag, and I'm sure you've heard the name, and if you haven't, I'm sure you know what it's about, and if you don't, where have you been? Under a rock? For those of you that don't know, Gorilla Tag is a free game on the Oculus Quest App Lab right now, and it's also free on PC VR as well right now. You use no buttons, no sticks, 
None of that is needed here. It's basically got its own locomotion and sort of movement system where you just grab and fling yourself around like an ape. Filling yourself around the maps in a big game of tag. When you tag someone, they change to the same color that you are. Then obviously you team up with the other people you've tagged to try and tag all the other people in the map until everyone is the same color and boom, you win or you lose. Exactly like a game of tag. <laughs> Also, here's your lesson for the day, everyone. In the UK, we actually don't call it tag, we call it TIG. Why do we call it TIG? I have no idea, but there we go. Now, this game is a real kind of Rocket League or Among Us type story, just in the fact that it's just a game, little game made by one person or a couple people just doing its own thing. And then suddenly it just catches the right eye of the right people and then it just explodes in the world. Gorilla Tag is getting more players every single day. It's becoming big talk in VR circles. Go check it out for yourself, especially if you have kids. This is definitely one for them as it's just tagged in VR but your gorillas instead and that just is super fun definitely one for the kids I have to say if you want them to just have some fun this is definitely the way and best to get in on it now ahead of the game because this thing is exploding the amount of reviews that it has on Steam is absolutely shocking the reviews on App Labs are increasing every single day it's gonna have a massive player base and I don't think it's gonna slow down anytime soon Next up is a look at the telepath movement system. Now this is very interesting as it's basically automatic movement. Now I mean that in the sense that you say where you want to go and then it will move you there and then you're free to do whatever in complete six degrees of freedom while it's moving you by itself. But you can break out of that movement system, you can reach for stuff, you can speed it up, slow it down. It's difficult for me to be completely accurate because there's a lot going on so I think the best way to explain it to you is to take a snip it from the creators themselves and let them explain it to you. Telepath is our solution, designed to dynamically blend fake and physical movement in ways that enhance sense of presence, free your hands from button pressing and reduce risk of simulation sickness. To use Telepath, simply draw a path. The system handles everything else, letting you concentrate on real movement. To stop or change course, point to where you're currently standing or casually draw a new path. Telepath maintains average human walking speed, but automatically adjusts in real time based on your physical movements. You can also run by making running motions. That's pretty awesome, right? See, I can see this being really helpful, especially for some people if they have issues with their hands or, you know, they're using their fingers all the time. Even people with arthritis, this would be very helpful. You draw your path and you move. So if you implement it into other games, this could make people's life a lot easier and make VR even more accessible for people. Now, this is available only with the game Waltz of the Wizards right now as the team behind the Telepath movement system also made this game. Telepath can be used as well using hand tracking on its locomotion system as well. Waltz of the Wizard is available on the official Oculus Store for the Quest and Steam VR for other headsets as well. So if you're really interested in this, go give it a try because this is a fantastic add-on. I don't think it's new news per se but updating it with hand tracking is and it's just something I really wanted to mention as I've not heard people mention a lot about it. Now some very new news here with the release of the OST soundtrack number four for Beat Saber. It's free for everyone who owns Beat Saber already. It comes with four new songs so far but comes with a range of new modifiers as well and some of these modifiers are amazing. You've got Pro Mode. Now Pro Mode will test you and how good you are at this game because basically normally in Beat Saber there is basically an aim assist or a massive hitbox around the notes if you will. So have you ever thought that you missed a note as it went past you but the game actually registers it as a hit? That is exactly why because you can actually not hit the blocks directly and it will still count that you have made the hit. So put simply, Pro Mode gets rid of this completely and you have to be 100% accurate with your hits on the blocks. If you think you're good at this game, prove it by using Pro Mode. Then there's Small Notes, which basically just shrinks the note cubes to 50% of their normal size. So you have to be even more accurate. And if you combine this with Pro Mode, you will definitely get your respect in the Beat Saber community. That is for sure. Then there's one of my personal favorites. There's Super 
super fast song. Now, you can speed songs up already with a modifier and Beat Saber, and I do this all the time, but what it does is it basically just increases the speed by about 20% while you're playing along with the song. Now, super fast song increases the speed up to 50%. And when I say up to, I don't know why, because it does. It increases it 50%. The developers say that this is what the community wanted when it comes to terms of numbers of how fast they wanted songs to be. This is an extra 50% speed on a song. You want to try that in Expert or Expert Plus, you are going to die probably. So good luck. Now, the modifier that I found the most interesting is Zen Mode. This removes everything from the stage. It removes all the notes, so there's nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing but you and the stage and the light. And to be quite honest, I'm really impressed. I thought, ah, oh, this is stupid. Why would I want to even look at this game when I'm not actually beat sabering or light sabering any blocks? But you know what? It is actually quite astounding how much is going on in the background and the stages of this game while you are hitting your notes playing to the song. I sat back and just enjoyed the show on various stages that you get with different DLC packs or just different OTS songs. And you know what? They're actually really interesting to watch. It's really mesmerizing just to sit there and enjoy the light show and what the background is doing because like I said there's just so much going on and I'm kind of repeating myself but I can't stress enough how interesting it actually is to sit there and just watch and listen through the song watch the light show it's like being at a planetarium just watch the laser show listen to the song and enjoy yourself people out there who like their recreational substances obviously where it's legal of course enjoy yourselves because this is definitely one for you Next up, we've got a fun new game announcement for the Oculus Quest systems. It's David Slade Mystery Case Files. Now, this sounds like it's going to be something special to me. You're David Slade, a homicide detective in the dark, gritty streets of Riverside. The cases are told episodically over the span of David Slade's career, where you have to gather, document evidence, use forensic tools, and solve really gruesome crimes. Because the way this game is described and the way it looks, it just screams L.A. Noir homicide detective desk missions to me but in VR and that sounds awesome. Now this isn't too visually spectacular I have to admit from looking at this promotional material but it is to know that this is made by Gear Rocks Production which is just a one-man show and this also explains the episodic nature of things. I would have to guess as with the first rebooting of the Hitman game franchise in 2016 it's releasing episodically for financial reasons i.e. if you release episode one and it makes enough money then episode two can either be made or finished or at the minimum speak to the game's validity enough that more episodes or more games can happen. This game sounds like something I personally could really get into so I will definitely be giving it a play at some point. The trailer looks good so go check it out if it catches your eyes. It's available right now on the App Lab for purchase. Facebook have announced a new wrist-worn device for hand tracking and interaction in VR and AR. I've seen some people talk about this in the video that Facebook has provided for this, but if you look at the bottom, it says that images are strictly for illustrative purposes only. So there's not really much to see here. All there is is ideas, including a Facebook neural interface. And that just sounds super scary. They want to be able to, and I quote, grab the electrical signal unquote from your brain so basically when you're using these wrist tracking devices they take the electrical signal from your brain as it comes from your brain to your fingertips to allow you accurate hand tracking. Now I've looked at the NextMind neural interface before you can check that out here but one of these in the hands of Facebook is scary. But again, rest assured, these things aren't even close to being implemented by Facebook yet, so that's something. Something, however, that is a bit far along on this same vein is the Tap ID. This is a safer wrist device that helps improve hand tracking. This is made on the basis that each finger sends a different vibration up to your wrist and through your arm. So Tap ID reads these vibrations in a fraction of a second to make your virtual hands and objects react accordingly. So 
personally, I can get on board with this a lot more than Facebook trying to read my mind. As long as you're sat with a surface in front of you, the tap ID will work. They claim it's even more accurate than tracking cameras when it comes to hand tracking. It's still early days for tap ID, but looking at this video footage, it does seem to work really well. And this isn't just a piece of promotional material saying, you know, this doesn't represent the full product, etc. This is really them using it in real time. And I think that's great. You could end up with an entire office in virtual environment. You might still be sat at a desk, but still, I think this has great implications for hand tracking. And that goes both for PC VR and Oculus Quest. That's it for the news today, but this is the moment that you've all been waiting for. The announcement of the three winners of the three keys to get themselves a free copy of Solicitude Wake Up are... Congratulations to the three of you. I will be messaging you to find out where you would like me to send your free key for a copy of Solicitude Wake Up. Enjoy yourselves, get scared, definitely put your brown trousers on and enjoy yourself. And definitely come back to me and let me know how you found the game because you've seen me play it and I almost pooed myself. So a lot of you in the comments section were saying you wanted to try this and you wanted the scare, so enjoy. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. I really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe down below for more in-depth game reviews and up-to-date VR news. Please follow me on Instagram and Twitter. You can find me at EyesOnVR. I also have a Discord as well that's getting more popular as time goes on. We're having lots of fun talking about all things VR and some things that aren't as well. My name is Rex. This is EyesOnVR. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.